So you want to learn how to edit your Milky Way photos in 15 minutes or less in Photoshop. Well, you are in the right place. Hey everybody, my name's Austin James Jackson. I'm a landscape photographer based in Southern Utah. In today's video, we're going to look at how to edit your Milky Way photos in Photoshop in 15 minutes or less. Now, since we're already on the clock, let's not waste any more time and let's jump right in there. Our image here open in Photoshop. First thing I like to do, I like to rename this layer to base, which is kind of our background layer. You can leave it at background. Make sure you uncheck the check here or the lock if it's locked. First thing I want to do, I want to go down to layer. I want to go to smart objects and I want to convert to smart object. Then I want to go to filter camera raw filter. This is going to be where I start to apply kind of my basic adjustments here. My sliders, I'll just add a touch of contrast, maybe remove a little bit of highlights, add some shadows some whites, maybe some blacks. And as I do this, I'll kind of talk you guys through this image. So if you're wondering why this particular photo maybe is very bright, like you can see there's a lot of detail in there. Uh, it's because I shot this as a blue hour blend. So that's one of the really cool things about doing a blue hour shot is that it gives me this really highly detailed and then this Milky Way is tracked. So you can see it's pretty uh, high quality Milky Way as well. So easy to edit now once I've kind of, I've already put it together before this video because I know most of you guys will be coming in just with your Milky Way image already as is. Maybe you've ran it through like a starry landscape stack or something, but if not, no worries. So I just kind of want to adjust these sliders to get my image to like a base working point and then I'm going to hit okay. We will let that load out here. Now there's a lot of different ways you can do this. The way that I want to show you guys, I'm going to create two folders here uh, or groups. I'm going to call one uh, FG for foreground and one sky for the sky. Now, what I need to do first is make a mask of the, either the foreground or the sky. I like to do that here with this tool here, which is the quick selection tool. You can hit W on your keyboard. It should bring it right up. Then I'm just gonna go click and drag and you can see how nicely that snaps to the edges. It works great, really easy to snap to the edges. Hopefully your Milky Way photo has a lot of contrast. You don't have like trees and stuff. So it is easy to snap it just like that. Then I'm just gonna click the layer mask button. Now you can see we've got a layer mask applied to the sky. I'm going to hold command and click on this to select it again. Then I'm gonna to go to select, I'm gonna to go to inverse, then I'm gonna to go to the foreground layer, put a layer mask. Now, sorry if we're working a little fast here, I apologize. I'm gonna link a few videos that cover a lot of the concepts that I'm talking about that I might not like teach you exactly how to do it, but I might show you what I'm doing. And you can watch those videos where you will be able to kind of see that concept more drawn out. But I don't wanna spend 45 minutes or an hour because I'm talking through all the concepts. I just kind of want to show you guys how the workflow works and how you can easily edit your photos in just a few minutes. So now that we have this, we can kind of cross process this image so we can edit the foreground and the sky separately. First thing I want to do in the foreground layer is create an adjustment layer. I want to get the exposure. I just want to drop the exposure a touch. I also want to grab the hue saturation. I want to desaturate that image. It's a little bit, I mean, I could saturate it and make it look crazy, but I like my nine images to look a little realistic. Somewhere around there works good. So then I want to go in here and I want to create a curves adjustment just like that. And what I want to do is I want to click and drag on the left side, bring it up just a hair, bring that down, add a little bit of contrast, bring this back up again. And maybe we'll actually bring this up. So just like that, I'm just kind of trying to flatten it out a little bit. I don't need it to be so contrasty in the foreground because normally in a night photo, like your foreground shouldn't be contrasty because the light should be really flat on it. Now I'm looking at the hue saturation. I actually want to go back and adjust it. So those are kind of usually the layers that I'll do for the foreground just to make it blend a little bit better with the night sky photo. Now we can go in and make our adjustments to the sky. The first thing that I think I want to do is just uh, reduce the stars here. This is a concept I talked about in another YouTube video, which I'll link here where you can see it more drawn out, but I'll show you briefly how to do it quickly here. So you want to do command alt option shift and E, which is going to merge all visible on the top. Then what I want to do is make a good selection of the stars. So I'm going to go to select color range. We are going to go down to highlights. And then I'm just going to adjust this until I have a good selection of the stars, but not everything else. So I don't want like this stuff over here to be selected necessarily, but I do want the effect to be strong so that you can see it in the video somewhere around there. You can see it's selecting a lot of the stars. We'll hit okay and let that load out. Now that is made as a selection. Now I'm going to go to select. I'm going to go to modify and I'm going to expand by two pixels. I'm going to go to select modify and feather 
by one pixel. Essentially, I'm just uh, expanding and modifying the selection here so that what I'm about to do works a little bit better. Now, what you wanna do is go to filter, go down to other, and you wanna go to minimum. The settings you want, you wanna preserve roundness, make sure it's not on squareness, you want roundness, and then a radius of 2.5 pixels, hit okay. Once that loads out, you can go up to select and hit deselect or hit command D. And then I wanna drag this layer into the sky layer here, just so that we're not affecting the foreground at all. You can see that's brought out the Milky Way, but it, it's kind of made the sky look like crap. And uh, the effect works in strong here. Now you wanna just reduce the opacity until you don't have black circles around the stars anymore. Somewhere about in there looks good for me. Now you can see how much more the Milky Way is gonna to start to pop. So now what we can do is actually create another layer. We'll go curves. And we are going to add some contrast here. This is where you're really going to make the magic happen. You'd be surprised at how much happens with just this one simple curve. And a lot of people will make the mistake of just using like a contrast slider. Use the curve here so you can control exactly how you want this to look. So I'm feeling like that's already looking pretty good. We can then come in and grab a hue saturation and we can just increase the saturation a touch. I don't want to overdo the blues there. So I might go, I'm actually going to increase the master a little bit more. And then I'm going to go into my blues and I'm going to reduce the blues. Somewhere about in there looks good. And maybe I want to reduce the yellows as well. The yellows are coming in a little strong. So let's just reduce them just like that. And then at this point, if you wanted to adjust the color balance of the sky, you could do so if you wanted to cool it down a little bit. Uh, and you can try playing around with doing this just to the highlights or just to the shadows. Sometimes cooling down the shadows is nice and then warming up the highlights can be kind of nice. And you can see how you could overdo it pretty quickly here. We haven't done a lot because it's kind of counteracting like on a teeter-totter. Uh, but I think right there looks pretty good for me. It didn't need a lot of white balance adjustments. That's something you probably want to do at the beginning if it's necessary. Um, but this is now starting to look pretty good. Now I want to go in and I think I'm liking how the sky is looking. If you want to go in, one thing you'll see a lot of photographers do is create a new layer, switch it to soft light, and then zoom in to your stars here. And you'll see a lot of photographers do this where they're going to hit I, get the eyedropper tool. They're going to sample the color of a star like that. You don't want to sample the middle because it's pure white. It's blown out. You want to sample right on the edge like that. And then you'll go over to your colors, drag this up to the very top. You'll grab your brush tool. And you're going to decrease the size of the brush. 10% opacity here. And you're going to go click, click, click. Make it a little bit bigger. Click a few more times. And you can do that to a bunch of different stars. So I could do that to this one as well. Come in here, about right there. Brush tool again. Let's make this a little bit smaller. Click, 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 click. A few times. Click, click a few more times. And so you can go around and do that to as many stars as you want. I'm just going to do a few for the sake of this video. But uh, this is a common technique people will use to add a little bit more depth to their night shots, make it appear like your stars are glowing a little bit more. And you could maybe do it to some stars up here. Just want to be careful a little bit just because some of these stars are on the edge and I don't want to bring too much detail to the edge. But you can see just like that. You can do the same thing with a dodge and burn layer. Um, you're going to go to overlay, create a new layer. And then what you're going to do is grab black and white. And then I like to go in with the black and you can start to paint in here. And I usually like to do this at like 5% opacity. So you can see I've changed it up there by hitting 0.5 on the keyboard. You can come in here and paint through and add some more contrast here. And where you're really going to see the biggest difference is when you go in with a really small brush and you just kind of paint some of these little, um, I don't even know what this is. I'm not a night sky expert. I'm an expert on shooting the night sky. I'm not an expert on telling you what everything is in the night sky. But anyways, if you paint these out, you can start to get some pretty, um, pretty nice details. And on some of my Milky Ways, I'll spend a lot of time painting those. You don't have to spend a lot of time. But you can see just in the couple minutes that I just did it right there. Uh, it's done a fair amount. So already looking pretty good here. If you want to go make more adjustments to the foreground, one thing I like doing is using a luminosity mask. 
So I might go here into my foreground layer using the TK luminosity mask thing here, which is free. If you go on Tony Kuiper's website, uh, you can download this by putting your email in. But anyways, it's a luminosity mask. I'll link a video where you can learn how to use luminosity masks. If you don't know already, if you do know though, I'm going to show you here what I'm going to do. I like to grab like a darks, maybe four or five. Let's go with five. We'll create a curves. Let that load out. And then what we're gonna do is just drag this up just a touch. And I'm really just trying to lighten these areas in here. You could do the same thing with a dodge and burn. So you could come in here with your, let's go overlay. And then I could sample a color here. It should be uh, somewhere, yeah, you can see it's kind of blue here. Let's actually go with almost pure white. And you could just come in here with your brush and paint back some detail here because it is feeling a little dark. I want it to be a little bit brighter up in here. So if the luminosity mask doesn't get it done for you, you can try that. So now you can see looking a lot better. And I'm honestly really happy with that. I feel like we just started working on this, but it's looking pretty good. And you can see how powerful Photoshop is with just a few adjustments. So let's look back again. This is the adjustments we made before the sky, after on the sky before on the foreground, after on the foreground. And together we've got before and after. Now the big thing that I really wanna do here is I want to do a custom vignette. And I have tons of videos on the custom vignette. Uh, you guys can watch it if uh, I'll link the video here for the custom vignette. But otherwise I'm just gonna show you how I always make it with my action, which I show you how to make in the video. So I'm gonna draw my circle, bring this to the center I'm gonna play the vignette. Like I said, this is the absolute best way to make a vignette. If you've been watching my videos for long, you've probably seen my video on it. If you haven't, definitely check that video out. You should be making your vignettes this way because it's going to make everything look a lot better. Want that in overlay blend mode. Then I'm gonna warp my vignette out. I'm gonna drag it out just a little bit like that. I want this foreground to stay pretty dark here. Uh, I want kind of all my, my attention to go to the center of the frame. I like my night sky to be vignetted on the edge. I think that gives it a really nice touch. So right in there. I don't want to darken that too much. Bring that away from the side. Just like that, I think is looking pretty good. We're going to hit OK. Let that one load out. But I think we're in pretty good shape here. We'll zoom in. And I'm not a huge fan of... Well, let me, now that I have this, so I have this lighten layer here where it's brightening the inside. It's kind of making it a little too washed out for me. So I might go in and turn off this right here. I'm just going to delete that. That was the paint that we just applied. And then I am going to go in here uh, back to the curves and I'm just going to punch a little bit more contrast in there. I don't want it to be so flat. Let's bring that up a little bit, just like that. I think we're looking pretty good. So I mean, just like that, in just a few minutes, you can see how few things we actually had to do in Photoshop to go from before to after. So that's how I go about editing my Milky Way photos in Photoshop. Thank you so much for checking out this week's video. I really, really hope that it was helpful for you guys. Now, if it was, do consider leaving a like and a subscribe in order to help me grow my channel. And at the same time, I'm gonna help you improve your photography. Now, thanks again for watching. We will see you guys next time. Adios.